In 2006, Middlesbrough very nearly won the UEFA Cup, the precursor to the Europa League. In itself, that would be a story, but the way it happened makes it scarcely believable. Borough had finished 7th in the Premier League the year before and were an interesting band of veterans, talents that had blown off course, bedrock Premier League players and homegrown promise. In goal, Australian stalwart Mark Schwarzer. Ahead of him, centre-back Chris Riggert, who was once expected to be an England international, and Gareth Southgate, who very much was one. The midfield was a blend of gnarly know-how in George Boateng and former Brazilian international Doriva but was also complemented by Fabio Rockenbach and former Valencia great Gaisga Mendieta, and enhanced by a pair of local boys, both born in the northeast of England, Stuart Downing and James Morrison. Up front, the team, managed by future England coach Steve McLaren, was stacked with goal scorers. Mark Viduka, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank and the mercurial Nigerian Yakubu, and a young, highly promising Italian in Massimo Macarone. It was an unlikely cast, and a story which would take in seven different countries, but it would mainly unfold in one of the great former heartlands of English football and British industry, and it would very nearly end in glory. It began in September 2005, with a simple two-legged win over Greek side Skoda Zemphi. Goals from Boateng and Viduka at the Riverside gave McLaren's side a 2-0 lead, which they defended easily to progress into the group stage and Borough would advance without so much as conceding once. An early Hasselbank goal in Switzerland would give them a win over Grasshoppers, Dnipro would be thumped at Riverside 3-0, and they'd survive a difficult evening in clement weather and a disallowed goal to draw with Louis van Gaal's RZ. On the final match day, Bulgaria's Litex Lovesh dug in on Teesside, frustrating Borough for much of the game until a stooping back post header from Macarone opened the scoring. The Italian would add a brilliant second from range, lashing into the top corner five minutes later to secure the win and a place in the next round as group winners. And then they would face German giants Stuttgart in the last 32, against whom McLaren would pull off a tactical sleight of hand. Borough lined up in a 4-5-1 with Hasselbank playing up front by himself and with Schwarzer making a couple of important early saves, one from former Newcastle forward John Dahl Thomason. The visitors survived the early period to then take the lead. A mistake in the home defence allowed Hasselbank in on goal and he finished past German international Timo Hildebrand. Rigott and Southgate were part of a defiant effort at the heart of defence as the hosts responded. But 10 minutes into the second half, Stuart Parnaby, another homegrown player and son of famous academy manager Dave, turned in a second away goal from close range, converting a Boateng cross. And it would be crucial. Stuttgart would get a goal back on the night and win the second leg 1-0 at the Riverside. But Borough were through. But next, they were to face a true heavyweight of European football. In AS Roma, the last 16 began perfectly. McLaren opted for two forwards this time, and one would create the only goal of the game for the other. When Hasselbank was brought down in the box by Gianluca Kerchi, Yakubu rolled the resulting penalty home, and Borough via another strong Schwarzer showing and an excellent performance from Lee Catamol were taking a lead to Italy, where again they would find a critical goal. This time Hasselbank scored himself, beating Philippe Mexes to a downing cross to put Borough 2-0 up on aggregate. We're just a small town in Europe, sang the travelling fans, who would then see Brazilian winger Mancini pull a goal back, before their team conceded a second-half penalty. It was given by Tom Henning of Rebo, the referee at the heart of the infamous Chelsea-Barcelona game several years later, and it was also converted. But Borough hung on to record one of the most famous victories in their modern history. Of course, only to that point, because their quarter and semi-final performances were remarkable. And this time, the away goals rule was the foe rather than the friend. The magic began in the second leg of the quarterfinals against FC Basel. Borough had lost the first leg 2-0 in Switzerland and a hard task looked to have become impossible when Basel capitalised on slack marking from a free kick to score from close range and leave McLaren's side needing to score four. Viduka provided hope. He barged through to get one back midway through the first half. Ten minutes after half-time, the comeback was on. This time Viduka collected a through ball, skipped around the goalkeeper and cut in from a wide angle. 
the Riverside went crazy, and with Hasselbank already subbed on, and Yakubu and Viduka starting the game, McLaren brought on a fourth forward, sending Macaroni on in place of defender Frank Cuedro. With just over 10 minutes left, Basel, by now down to 10 men, were losing their nerve. Hasselbank would make it 3-3 on aggregate with a stunning goal, picking out the top corner with no backlift from 25 yards. Burrett needed one more, and in injury time, it would arrive. A swirling rock and back shot from distance was only parried, and Macarone, who had followed in, steered the ball back towards goal and in via the keeper's gloves. The greatest comeback since Lazarus was how local commentator Ali Brownlee described it on air, and he wasn't far wrong. But it would happen again, with an eerie similarity in the semi-final. Once more, Burrow would lose the first leg, beaten 1-0 by Stal Bucharest in Romania. But this time, they'd concede two goals at home, and again found themselves needing four to advance. At 3-0 down on aggregate, McLaren went to his bench. Macarone was sent on for a limping Southgate and quickly pulled the goal back finishing low and hard into the bottom corner. Three goals needed, 57 minutes left. Just after the hour, a superb downing cross teased the visiting keeper off his line, allowing Viduka to thunder over the top of him and head in. And two goals needed became one when Chris Riggett, of all people, reacted quickest to prod a rebound home from inside the six-yard box. The Riverside was in frenzy again, and a fourth and decisive goal seemed inevitable. Only, it didn't come. The time ticked on. Stauer began to labour over throw-ins and goal kicks. The anticipation inside the ground turned to anxiety at the prospect of falling just short. However, in the 89th minute, the moment of the night, Downing produced another sublime cross, drifted to the back post. And Macarone threw himself at it to score, sending the home fans into another wild celebration and believe it or not, Middlesbrough into their first ever European final. It had taken two miracles, 21 days apart, but Borough were heading to Eindhoven to face Sevilla. Now, unfortunately, there would be no third miracle. It would prove a stage too far. Juan de Ramos's team, which featured Dani Alves, Jesus Navas and Enzo Maresca, were too smart and too good. They'd win 4-0. They'd also win the UEFA Cup the next year too, beginning the process of establishing themselves as the tournament specialists in Europe. And in 2006, that came at Middlesbrough's cost. But not before Steve McLaren's team had authored a sequence of miraculous performances and a set of highlights which remain on rotation to this day. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is where the Ralph Rangnick to Manchester United story broke, where a team of journalists have provided unrivalled coverage of Newcastle United's new ownership and where dedicated writers cover every Premier League team no matter their place in the table. And you can try it free now for 30 days.